It was a long time since we visited the historical city of Kilkenny in the southern region of Ireland. By train, Kilkenny is only an hour and a half away from Dublin, and it is a pleasant train journey, especially if you go on a sunny day, as we did. Kilkenny figures high on many an itinerary to Ireland, and for good reason. It's a fairly compact show place, with easily enjoyed heritage, a castle, interesting shops, a wide range of restaurants, lots of pubs and many inviting places to stay. You can cover pretty much everything on foot in a couple of hours, but sampling many of the lights will take much longer. There is an elegance and vibrancy that give the town a timeless appeal. Much of Kilkenny's architectural charm owes a huge debt to the Middle Ages, when the city was a seat of political power. A time has not passed the city by. Kilkenny remains a cultural center renowned for its devotion to the arts. Arriving in Kilkenny, this bustling town in the south of Ireland, the first stop must be the castle. This fantastic 12th century castle, which was originally built by the strong doors and then continued by the Martians. Just opposite the castle, there is a design centre, the design centre in Ireland, which is called the Kilkenny Design Centre, with a lot of uh, exhibitions, and inside, in fact, there is a, a yard called the Castle Yard, with all the studios where all the best design in Ireland are in After visiting the famous Kilkenny Castle, we wound our way towards St. Canis' Cathedral.
We're standing here outside St. Canis's Cathedral, which is the, the second oldest cathedral in Ireland. It belongs to the Church of Ireland. It is a 13th century cathedral devoted to the patron saint of Kilkenny, St. Canis. And it is built on an old 6th century site of Christian worship. There are many pubs and eating houses here in Kilkenny, but this particular pub, the Kitelips Inn, has a special, interesting story. The story of this pub, which was uh, opened in 1302, is tied to the story of a lady called Alice Keitler, who went through four husbands and she was accused of poisoning them all, to the point that she was considered a witch. At the end of our short visit to Kilkenny, we thought we end the day, as the Roman said, in Dulcis in Fundo. We are here at the, one of the most celebrated Italian restaurants in the whole of Ireland, especially in Kilkenny, where he has been the emperor of restaurants for a long time, over 20 years at least. And we go and meet Antonio Cavaliere, who is a, a brilliant chef, with his wife, who have been running this restaurant ever since. Mm -mm. Now, Antonio, you have been in Ireland how many years now? Many years. 45? 45. And you've been running this wonderful restaurant for how many years? 23. 23 years. So it started in... 1989. 89. No regrets, I suppose. No, I haven't. Because you are still, as I said in my introduction, the emperor of Italian restaurants in Ireland and in Kilkenny. Thank you. Okay, well, I mean, I'm delighted. And you have been aided by your lovely wife, Marion. The woman Cameron. behind the man. <laughs> the woman behind the man. You know, there's no doubt about it. There is always a great woman behind a great man. Thank you. Right. Now, tell me, this restaurant now is called Rinuccini. Rinuccini is a very important name in the history of Kilkenny because Rinuccini in 16 something in the 17th century, came here as an apostolic nuncio. He did. And he was at the time when uh, the Catholic Empire was ruling, shall we say. And uh, so you have a restaurant with a name like that. Has it been very profitable for you? For that? It's been very good to us. Yes. The so name you, and yeah. the restaurant. <laughs> and the restaurant. <laughs> so you have had a lot of uh, prelates and uh, yes. bishop, yes, all sir. the. Oh, regularly, the IRP coming yes. here. Regularly. Regularly, yes, yes very good. 
The, no, last, like the last papal nuncio to Ireland had his final going away dinner here in Minichini's. All the uh, cardinals and bishops from all over Ireland uh, booked out the restaurant. Well, well I mean, it, it's, it's, it's very logical, isn't it? And that's where that he was the last. The that last, was the last uh, papal nuncio. The last um, to leave. Um, yeah, 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 two or three years ago. Who went, yeah. went away and it mm. was replaced with somebody else. Mm. Yes, your cuisine, of course, is excellent. It's always been excellent. You still have a, a, quite a, a patron, a number of patrons here who come all the time. Are they local people come from outside all the time? We have a lot of locals, uh, but we have people from all over Ireland. From all over Ireland. Tell and abroad something. as well. Yes, of course. But tell me something, you import everything from Italy. You are a genuine restaurateur, Italian restaurateur, one of those ones who are uh, considered as the real ambassadors for Italy in this country. I am indeed. Did Anything you? that we we need to import from Italy, we import yes. ourselves. We don't go to to any agency. We pick our own products yes. before we get exported. Well, the Italian minister for um, the Italians, uh, mm -hmm. okay. Tremagli, invited. Tremaglia, yes. He invited Antonio to Rome. Uh, three or four years ago and we showed an honour on him as an ambassador for Italian food and culture in Ireland representing the very best of what um, Italian chefs abroad do. He invited a hundred chefs from around the world, um, one from Ireland which was Antonio and then uh, bestowed a, an honour on him for his contribution to Italian cuisine. Well done, well done. Well I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. you compliment this lovely city or town as they call it. They call it city or city? City. <laughs> most historical city. And you have contributed to the most historical contribution from an Italian point of view to this city. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm Mario.